Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So today we are going to do something new for this channel, which is we are going to do some audio stuff. So it's going to be basic audio stuff and uh, the main objective here is to have fun with some uh, little tunes and things that we will create. And I want to create at the same time the visuals for this audio music that we are going to create. Okay, good. Um, I've got a super annoying uh, sound here with the cycle just to test the audio out. Seems to be working great. So we are going to do like kind of a tracker thing. We are going to use the live step object. So the live step is kind of this step sequencer thing. And we are going to build a kind of a tracker with it. So let's first start to build some, uh, some kind of bass line. No, first let's start actually with uh, some drum sounds. So like a kick and a snare. Um, okay, I think we are going to do it like this. Uh, first we are going to create a line object, which we are going to use for the frequency of the kick. So how the frequency of the kick is gonna change. So let's say for example, that it goes from 0 to 150 in 10 milliseconds. So this starts from 0 and then it goes to 150 in 10 milliseconds. So we're talking about the frequency here of the of the cycle. And then it's going to go to 0 again in something like 100 milliseconds. So let's see how, how this actually sounds. Okay, it sounds pretty good as a kick for a starter and uh, great. So let's create now also some uh, envelope for this kick because this is just the frequency. Uh, actually, we could say that it goes back to 50. Yeah, this sounds good. And then we will use the envelope to actually mute this sound. So actually we have to connect this to the multiplier and then we're going to create an envelope. Uh, we're going to create an envelope simply with another line object. So we go to 1 in 10 milliseconds and then it will stay at 1 for 100 milliseconds or maybe let's say 50 and then we we'll go to 0 in uh, other 50. Okay, let's connect a bank to both these uh, messages and see what we get. Okay, let's maybe say that this stays at 1 for like 100 milliseconds. And then it goes to 0 also in 100 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, say 200 milliseconds. Yeah, then we get a bit of these uh, room vibrations with the kick, something like that. Okay, great. Now we need a way to trigger our sound once uh, every bar or four times for every bar, let's say. So let's create a metro. And let's say this metro is going to be quantized to 120, which we'll say is our tempo. Let's actually create a transport object so we can define uh, what our tempo is going to be for our global transport. So let's say tempo is going to be uh, 120. Great. Uh, so this is going to happen four times every bit. So we should give it like a note value of 4n, which means four times for every bit. If I'm not mistaken, this should be like a quarter note. So great. Let's start both the metro and the transport object at the same time with a toggle. And let's see if this actually works. Good. Seems to be working. Great. Uh, let's actually now create a snare with the same in the same way. So let's do it like this with a noise object. So we are not defining the frequency of the noise. We're just defining is amplitude with an envelope. And uh, let's see what we get if we just do that. So actually, I'll touch a bang. Okay, it's a bit too long. So let's say that it goes to 1 and then it stays at 1 for 30 milliseconds, then it goes to 0 in 10 milliseconds. A bit too short. Let's say that it goes to 0 in 50 milliseconds. Let's say that it goes to 1 in 10, stays at 1 for 70 milliseconds. Okay, that's kind of good. We can always improve it. Uh, for the moment, let's give it like this. And then let's say, actually, let's do like this. Let's attach a toggle to this, uh, to this metro. And then let's say, when this is zero, then do the, the kick. And when this is one, then do the snare. So let's see. Okay, it's a bit slow. Let's try actually with 8N, which means... Uh, uh, should be our eight, eight note. 
it's a bit too fast. Uh, let's actually stay with the four and but let's actually make the tempo faster. So let's create a couple of messages. Tempo and quantize for the um, metro. And uh, let's see if this uh, makes it better. So let's say, for example, a tempo of 200. Okay, great. I'm not super satisfied with the snare. So let's try to improve it a bit. Let's make it uh, kind of uh, going into some smaller value after after 10 milliseconds. So if we go to 1 in 10 milliseconds, then we go to 0 0.3 in 70 milliseconds. That's a bit better. Let's try to... Oh, okay, this is a bit more... That's a bit nicer because it's a bit more uh, dry. Great. Uh, we could actually attach a couple of gain objects to these, um, to these sounds so we can actually mix them. Great. So this is going to be... Or kick. That's going to be the snare. Can also distort it a bit. So I think we're going to recreate a bit this 8-bit sound. I actually composed the music with my Game Boy some years ago. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's called Domino Lego, the project. You can find it still on SoundCloud. Uh, but uh, this reminds me a bit of the sounds that you can create with the Game Boy. So I think we're going to go for that kind of... Uh, that kind of aesthetic for the moment. So what I want to do is to save the patch now and uh, let's now create uh, a line, a bus line. Good, we are going to do it with our um, step sequencer. So let's create a so object that's going to be our bus. Now the step sequencer, it give, will give us a, uh, a list uh, with uh, the values of the index uh, and then the pitch. Uh, and then the velocity, and then it will give some more stuff which we don't care for the moment. So we just care, care about these three things. So uh, we need a way to draw, to drive this step sequencer. So let's use actually our forge node. So let's say send for and metro. Great. And we can actually attach it to a counter here. So these are 16 nodes. 16 steps in this step sequencer, we can change that as well, but for the moment um, let's just keep it uh, like that. So I think they start from zero, but I'm not completely sure, so let's give it a try. No, exactly, they start from one, so we should actually go between one and 16. Okay, great. And then we can actually create a preset to save our sequences. So I connect it here. So now if we change it, now we press this, this goes back to uh, our sequence. Good. We, this could be our way, for example, to create uh, several sequences of, um, of nodes. This is maybe not the best way to do that, but uh, I think it's kind of the easiest way for the moment without going too much into the attributes of the live step. So we're going to go with that. Now, if we just want to get the pitch of this, it's going to be the second... Uh, sorry, let's use an unpack object. So these are all a bunch of integers, apart from the fourth value, which is the duration, which could be a float. And for a moment, let's just unpack those. So the second value here that we unpack is going to be our um, MIDI value. Great. So let's transform this to frequency with the M2F object, so MIDI to frequency. And uh, let's connect this actually to gain object. And let's mix it into our mix. So. Sounds pretty good. It's got a bit down with the finger. And let's get some bass notes. So let's collect this. Well, let's actually implement a way to actually stop our transport when we press the space bar. So let's select this. Okay, key. Going to be a bit like Ableton. Say cell 32 for the space bar. And we stop it. Now the audio is still playing because uh, it will keep the last note that he got. And we actually would like to have a way to hear the sound when we edit it. And actually we get a list with the, the mouse position. So with the values from the mouse position here when we from the third output of the live step. So let's go again with this uh, unpack thing. 
Here we will get the um, frequency as well, which we can then attach here, so we can actually hear what we are doing. Okay, so let's create a little bus line. Now let's press the spacebar and we go back on playing. So this is our bus line for the moment. It's not, <laughs> it's not much, but uh, let's try to make it a bit more interesting. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Let's save it in the preset. Okay, great. Let's now create our lead sound. Uh, we should actually also give uh, an envelope to these notes. For the moment, let's just leave them like this. So not really, they will not have any envelope. They will just play the whole time. So let's actually create another of those. Exactly. Uh, let's go like this. So this will be our uh, lead synth or something like that. Let's connect this to the output. Great. Let's copy also that actually. Let's connect this to the... Let's actually create a rect. So a rect object which will contain a, a square wave which will give us a different sound. So let's see what we get. Okay, sounds already kind of good. Let's now create our lead line. Let me hear once again the bus line. Okay, let's see what we got. <laughs> okay, not really much. Not like this note at the end. Let's try with that. Sounds pretty funny. Actually, put all the mix objects, the gain objects, kind of close to each other. Uh, let's actually create another preset. So let's start with load mass one. It's probably a better way to do that. We're going to see in the future how we can do this better. Let's create another bus line. Let's actually take this down. Okay, let's see what we got. This is going to be our second, uh, our second bus line. So this is our first one. Let's go with the second one. Let's really change it a bit. Okay, let's do that. Let's do the first one. Okay, sounds pretty good. Let's really save this with a global preset. Let's have a global preset so we can save the whole thing. Let's create a master gain. Let's actually use a live gain for that. So we can do live.gain. And let's connect uh, all these fellas to the live gain. So, okay, so everybody is going, every one of our gain objects is going to buff inputs of our um, live gain. So we have actually a master game. Pretty cool. Uh, let's actually create our first visual now. Uh, we're going to do very, something super simple. Uh, let's see, we will just create a little sphere, I think, that gets smaller and bigger according to the kick, for example. So first we need a Jit world uh, with floating one. Now, if you don't know anything about Jitter in Max, I got a lot of tutorials about this stuff. So check them out. So then we need to give it a different size, uh, just to make it smaller when we start. Let's start with it enabled. So enable one. Great. So now we got our um, our world. Let's actually give it a name. My cool world. Oh, it's a bit too long. Just cool world. Good. Uh, let's create a GGL grid shape. Cool world. And uh, let's give it a color. No, let's actually do like this. So this is our grid shape. Let's attach a GGL material to it, so it looks a bit better. So we also need to write cooled world here. And we have to need it, we, we need to give it a color, we can do this with matte diffuse. So let's give it a color of red. Let's actually connect it to the object. Great. 
Let's create a GGL camera to get a bit uh, back in the scene. So a virtual camera. Crew world position 004, for example. Good. Now we are a bit outside from the uh, from the world. Uh, let's uh, create a scale message. And we're going to scale uh, to scale this uh, grid shape according to, for example, the kick. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, we could either use a snapshot. Let's try it simply with a snapshot, uh, which translates the signal into into max values. But it's not working because it needs either a bang or a time value uh, where it should do that. Let's do it with a bang. So let's create a sender here, sender metro from our GGL cool world. So let's call it visuals metro. And uh, instead of giving it uh, a value in time, we just use the bang that we receive from the world. So for every frame, we will actually have a different max value from this uh, from the audio stream, which is actually the most efficient way to do that. Okay, so cool. So now it's getting smaller and bigger according to the... Um, following basically the kick. It's actually here only the kick. Yeah, so that's what's going on. Okay, great. I could actually make it a bit more interesting by using, for example, uh, at ease object, which is part of the JIT ease package. And then we could give it, for example, a function that is not linear, uh, but we could use something else. So, for example, let's see. But I think we will go with the uh, outbound. So, function number 22. Great. This gives it kind of this bouncy feeling, which is awesome. Let's change the material, uh, the font, the specular uh, model for the material object from the material editor, which was which was kindly reimplemented recently in GL3. So this is the specular model. Let's go maybe with word. So let's hard code it in the object. So specular model word. Okay, we got our sphere bouncing around according to the kick. Let's go back with our sounds, our little tune. Just curious to see what happens if we halt the frequency of the of the bus line. Let's see how does it sound. Mm, sounds pretty fat to me. Maybe it's a bit too low frequency, so for the moment let's keep it like that. Okay, everybody, I think this is going to be it for this video. I always wanted to do a video about music and uh, sound in Max, actually also a way to get back into the audio side of Max, which is actually great. So I think I will go on with this series, but uh, please let me know in the comments or on Facebook or Instagram or Discord if you are a patron of mine, uh, what do you think about this? And what will be, for example, something that you're interested in to see next? Uh, anyway, I will also go on with the Particle series video for uh, the, the, the few people that are following it, uh, don't worry, it's going to go on until we get a super cool particle system, so stay tuned for, uh, for the videos, they are coming. Thank you very much for following and uh, see you soon in the next video, ciao!